Hi, I'm Dr. Krupka. I'm a chiropractor and a nutritionist on the north side of Houston, Texas. My practice focuses predominantly on functional medicine. If you're not familiar with what functional medicine is, you can go to the Institute for Functional Medicine's website. Uh, you can Google functional medicine or you can go to my website at drkrupka, that's K-R-U-P-K-A, dot com and read some of the articles that I have there explaining what functional medicine is all about. For today, I wanted to get a quick uh, video blog post up. Um, this is a little lower tech than I normally do. But there was a show on today that talked a lot about uh, intestinal parasites and worms, and I knew my patients were going to have lots of questions, so I wanted to get some good information out to you guys so that you have some idea what to do about what you might have seen on TV today. Now, that being said, let's talk about stool samples. Exciting topic, right? But stool samples come in, in two basic varieties. There's the standard everyday stool sample that you can get from your family doctor or from your gastroenterologist. And there's a functional medicine stool sample that we do, and there is a very significant difference. So let me talk about that for a minute. Um, the regular stool sample that you get, it's done by a method that I call catch and culture. Right? You catch and they culture. So you poop in a cup, you send it to the lab. Once it gets there, it gets divided, right? Part of the sample goes to parasitology. Part of the sample goes to, I'm going to call it incubation, right? It, it's kind of microbiology. They, they want to see what kind of bacteria, fungus, yeast, that kind of stuff is in it. So let's talk parasitology first for a second. When that sample heads to parasitology, somebody puts it on a slide, they put that in a microscope, and a human being has to look at that. When that person's looking at that slide, they are looking for parasites and eggs. Now, it's estimated that the sensitivity of a test like that is such that you have to have roughly 25,000 cells per gram of stool um, of that parasite material or egg material before it's likely to be picked up on the, on the, the examination through the microscope. A, a gram of stool is roughly a, a thimble's worth of stool, maybe a little more depending on the density of your stool. That's not a terribly sensitive test. It's easy to miss parasites. Now, there's the human factor, right? There's the Monday morning sample where the, the, the technician's really eager and fresh and ready to go. And then there's a Friday afternoon sample where things might not be quite as, as, as good. Now, nothing against them. They're human. But when you average all that out, it comes down to roughly 25,000 cells per gram uh, as, as what it takes for that to show up. That's not a really sensitive test. Okay, So a lot of times they miss parasitic activity that should be caught and should be dealt with. Now, the, the other side of it where they send these things to be smeared on petri dishes and cooked in the incubator for a little while. There's an issue with that as well. About 85 to 95, depending on, on what you read, percent of the bacteria in your gut are what we call anaerobic bacteria. They don't like oxygen. They don't live in oxygenated environments. So once you go in the cup and it goes to the lab, that's all exposed to oxygen. So you kill off all of that anaerobic bacteria. All they have left to grow in the petri dish in the incubator is the aerobic stuff. And that only makes up 10 or 15% of the stool. So they grow the aerobic stuff. You're not seeing a full picture, but at least you see something. And what happens in that, they, they put a particular blend of nutrients in the auger, that jelly that's in the bottom of the petri dish. Well, if that nutrient blend is more beneficial for one bacteria than the other, you're going to grow more of one bacteria than the other. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that bacteria was predominant in your gut. It just means that the environment that the lab created was more beneficial for that bacteria. So there are times, you know, when you order a stool sample on somebody, it comes back and it says that this particular bacteria, you know, grew this massive culture in the petri dish. That doesn't tell me whether it was a major player in your gut. It just tells me it liked the nutrition that the lab gave it. So that's not really what I'm testing you for. So anyway, all we could tell from the old style stool samples, and they're still being done out there. In fact, that's probably the dominant thing that's being done out there. But all we could tell was if, if we grew it in the petri dish, it was in you. Amount didn't really matter. If we didn't grow it in the petri dish, all bets are off. It could have been a huge issue for you. It could have been non-existent. We just don't know. And if they didn't find it on the microscopic exam, we kind of assume you don't have a level at or above 25,000 cells per gram. Still doesn't tell us whether or not it's part of your problem. So fraught with issues. And a lot of doctors have known for years that they have patients sitting in front of them that obviously have digestive issues. They run a stool sample and it comes back clean. There are doctors that routinely run multiple samples when they do this to attempt to try to find something on the sample, but none of it really works terribly well. And certainly it's not reliable as far as stool sample testing goes. So what do we do that's different? I use a company called Metametrics. 
M-E-T-A-M-E-T-R-I-X. If you want to go to their website, it's metametrics.com. I should be able to post a link along with this blog post, but just in case this video gets sent to you out of context, I want you to have that. They do their stool samples by a method that's called DNA probe, and it's exactly what it sounds like. They have a database of little snips of DNA that basically make up fingerprints of these different bacteria and fungus and yeast and parasites. So it's a little snip of DNA that only belongs to that particular organism. So when you poop in a cup and send it to the lab, that sample's dead. It, you add a little bit of something similar to formaldehyde to it, kills everything in there, it becomes a snapshot. There's no more metabolism, nothing's growing or anything like that. It is what it is. They get that to the lab and they start to work through it and they find parasites down to four cells or five cells per gram of stool. Five cells, not 25,000 cells per gram, five. They can also go through it and quantify every bacteria that's in there, every parasite, yeast, fungus, whatever. They can quantify it. They can tell me how, how much of it is present. Is it just one? Is it, you know, five million? They'll tell me. So we can gauge how big of a problem it is. We know what bacteria it is down to the, to the species. They do what's called taxonomy on most of that. Um, so we get very, very detailed information about what I call the ecology of the gut what's living in there and what's not, what's the environment like. We also get information, oh and by the way, that gives us both aerobic and anaerobic. They don't have to grow anything, so it doesn't matter whether it likes oxygen or not. They simply work through the sample chemically and look for any sign of bacteria, yeast, fungus, and they identify what they all are. Okay, so all of that's in there. Hugely important information that we don't get on the standard stool sample. Now along with it, we get pH of the stool, we get whether or not there's blood or mucus in the stool. There are certain markers for inflammatory processes that can also give you some indication as to your risk of colon cancer. I get to see how effective your um, pancreas is being at producing digestive enzymes. I get to see if your gallbladder is doing a good job of emulsifying the fats and allowing you to absorb those into your system. I get tons of information like that. This test also will check and see if you have anti-gliadin antibodies. And for those of you that are familiar, that's testing for a gluten sensitivity or a wheat allergy as it's loosely called. Um, it isn't diagnostic for celiac, but it can indicate the need for further testing to find out if you're celiac. Uh, celiac's a particular type of, of fairly severe gluten allergy or sensitivity. So all that being said, we can do a very detailed stool sample that will give you tons of information about what's going on in you. Why would you want that? Well, let's talk about who this test is appropriate for. There are people who have obvious digestive concerns. They have irritable bowel, um, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, bleeding, diarrhea with fevers, not, uh, all that stuff, right? Obviously there's a digestive issue there. But there are other people with learning disorders, dyslexia, um, autism. There are people with certain seizure disorders. There are people with unexplained symptoms that just don't seem to fit together. Nobody can make, make sense out of it. There are people with autoimmune problems. My gosh, when you look at alternative medicine, all autoimmune problems come from the gut so frequently. 70 or 75% of your immune system surrounds the lower intestinal tract. When you have problems with that lower intestinal tract, you're constantly activating that immune system. You can easily get disruptions that cause autoimmune problems when that happens. Um, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, all those types of, of issues in many cases, we can track that back to a gut ecology problem. You see what the ecology looks like, you restore it to normal function, the gut works the way it's supposed to, and things go into remission that you wouldn't believe. All right? We see it all the time in our office. I do a lot of intestinal rehab, so to speak. So anyway, I knew that was going to be on TV today. There is a, a big problem with normal stool samples, and I wanted to address that and get you guys some information. Here's what I suggest. I can go on for hours about this, but we're almost out of time. Leave me some comments. Ask me some questions. If I keep getting the same questions over and over again, I'll make a second video that goes more in depth into that. Okay? There's a lot we can do to change gut ecology, and we can get a really, really accurate look at it if you do the right test. So go to the website, metametrics.com. Check them out. Look at the GIFX profile. Call my office if you have questions. We can get you a brochure on the test shows you an example of what all the different pages in the test look like so you can see how detailed it is. We can hook you up with the test and, and we can usually do a really good job of taking care of the issues we find. So that's it for now. We'll see you next time. Let me know if you have questions. Thanks.